Well, hello and welcome to this week's video. As I had promised you in one of my last videos, this is about my fairy tale Scottish wedding in the Highlands in October last year. Since there is no video material on the actual wedding day, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an overview of how we make this decision and how we planned the wedding the way we did. So my husband and I both come from large family backgrounds really, but we knew that we wouldn't want a big celebration and a large group of people. Also, we were still in the middle of the pandemic and the restrictions were coming and going, so we didn't know how it would pan out actually for people to travel. So this way, we made the decision to have a private ceremony. We actually also decided to have an elopement wedding, which means nobody knew about us getting married prior to it happening. Well, our son knew and one of my friends knew because you need to talk to some people also making decisions on dresses and things. But other than that, nobody really knew. We both are hikers and I have a connection to Glencoe in the Scottish Highlands, which is probably the most visited Glen. And you're gonna see this everywhere in pictures of Scotland. So that decision also was made to get married there. And when we found our photographer, Ian, online, he was one of those who knew the area very well and had done many elopement wedding photography there. And through him, we also found our florist and the stylist, as well as the celebrant, Gary. So we didn't have a registrar for the wedding. Uh, they do come out and they actually do hike up if you so wish, but they're very strict with time. So when you set a, a time on the day, that is the time you have to get married, no matter the weather. And with a celebrant, we had a little bit of flexibility there as you would wait an hour or so when it's really rainy and you wish to postpone the wedding. So with the, all of that planned through, almost through the photographer, we were in safe hands because the people all we worked with knew each other very well and had done so in the past for quite a number of years. I met with a florist once online at a Zoom meeting. So we had a little bit of conversation about uh, color schemes and what my husband would wear, what kind of kilt he had. And I gave her a little bit of an overview of what kind of flowers I liked, but I actually never really knew how the bouquet would look. So I left it to her and she did a fantastic job. The flowers were so great and lovely and went along so well with everything on the day. My wedding dress I also found online. There is a vintage bridal shop down in London and luckily lovely Helen sent dresses to me to my house so I could try them on. And this is a couple of videos that you would see when I was trying them on to show to my friend and make a decision. I decided for a 1960s silken gown, which I had fallen in love with seeing it online. But when I put it on, it fitted me perfectly. Nothing had to be changed. Even the length was brilliant for me. We knew that we would have to wear hiking boots because we were going into the wild with buggy undergrounds and even roots crossing your path. So the length of the dress was also very important, but it was just perfect for me. The cardigan that you see in the wedding photographs, I actually knitted myself. I knew I needed something warmer for the day because it was unlikely to be warm and the dress has lace sleeves, so I knew I needed something. And I did look around, but I couldn't really get what I wanted. So quite late in the project, I decided to knit the um, cardigan myself, which was a project because I had to really be quick with it and hope that it is at the end of the day a project that worked and it did. Um, the, the color, the fit, everything worked out quite well. So I was again, very lucky with that. The celebrant made the ceremony really private and personal. We had a couple of meetings with him also online before and we chose what we wanted in our ceremony. We did have the hand fasting, which used to be a lawful legal way to get married in Scotland hundreds of years ago. And we also decided to drink from a quay, which is a friendship cup. And uh, we had our private um, vows spoken and a ring exchange in the end. And then was cutting off the cake, of course, all of that you see in the photographs later. And afterwards, we then were driven around by the photographer's father, who also came um, to drive him 
uh, and he also became our witness because in Scotland you still need two witnesses to sign the marriage papers. So he was also kind and lovely and we had such a brilliant day with them together. So they drove us to all those places where the pictures were taken and drove us back to the hotel at the end of the day. So all in all, we were very lucky. The weather was nice. We had almost no rain and low hanging clouds who gave the pictures a moody kind of atmosphere. And all in all, it was just relaxing, lovely, happy, a fairy tale wedding that I could never have dreamt of. So I can recommend this kind of wedding should you think about having a private ceremony you can get married in Scotland no matter where you're from you just need to abide by the legalities of it and check with your own requirements in your country but generally there are a couple of companies that organize this for you and tell you what you need to do so I hope you have fun now with the video and the photographs and if you have any questions just let me know thank you for watching and I see you soon Tak